Mission three, all quiet in the library. For this one, we want to start on the fifth attempt. That's going to spawn us a nice pity crate that we need to beat the mission really fast. As a reminder, if you started on the first mission, you should have pressed tab three times, and that gets your space bar selected on the start mission button, and then you can just press space from then on out to start every mission. Or if you've already beaten the missions, you're just scrolling through them, just press tab five times. So the moment we actually see the game start, the loading done, just press Alt F4, then mash space, Alt F4, then mash space. Uh, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, space. Okay, so Alt F4, so third attempt, fourth attempt. And we're on the fifth attempt now. All right, so this is a kill em all mission. We have six enemy worms we need to kill, and they're very spread out across the map. So this can turn into a serious slog if you're not careful, but it can be a three turner if everything goes right. So we have bazookas, a mortar, which is weird because that's the most useless weapon in the game. Uh, some other weapons, three ropes, which is important. Sometimes we want to conserve our ropes on this one. And there's that pity crate I talked about, the baseball bat crate. So the reason this is important is because on turn one, we're going to bat the captain, bank him off that crate into the two grenadier worms to get a triple kill. So right away on turn one, you want to press F8 to select rope and just do an up jump and shoot the rope at the height of your jump. And this is almost a little rope routine, so you want to bounce over the first grenadier, do a second little bounce, so like sort of holding up and right uh, on the right side of the book. We want to collect those two crates, and we really want to make sure not to hit the baseball bat crate. If we collect that, then we can't do this bat triple kill. So you want to avoid that like the plague. So drop over just left of the captain, keep nudging right, until the first spot where you're on the captain. So you'll see your worm rise up just a little bit. Select baseball bat, and we're actually gonna use our second worm's name as a marker. I guess you could call it a, instead of a train marker, a, a name tag marker. So keep moving it up until the first spot where the top of the crosshair overlaps the lower gray border of the name. And your worm's name does actually have to be long enough for this to work. I'd recommend just changing it or, you know, keep the same name. Just add some some spaces, some dollar signs, you know, a 420. So do the bat, forward jump, keep walking right till you run into your worm, then just up jump. So ending there is actually super important because our two worms on the left are in a pile and the CPU is drawn to piles like a, a worm to honey so he'll always do this grenade shot and that's great because it's a really short turn so on this turn you can actually just walk over to him if you want to save a rope and saving a rope can actually help if things go wrong um so it's kind of up to you but if everything goes right then using this rope is totally fine and saves you you know five to ten seconds of travel time so just bat him left into the water, jump to the left and walk as far left as you can. The first two turns will always go like clockwork, but now on this CPU turn, everything could just get thrown into a blender at the CPU's whims. There's some RNG in what it does, but luckily most of the time it will do something that gives you a nice three turner. Other times it may be a bit more ugly. Let's look at the different outcomes. So here's the first thing the CPU can do. And this is usually if it gets uh, blue wind, you can kind of tell by the wind, um, although that's not a perfect indicator. So it'll take one shotgun shot at the fifth worm in your rotation. It'll keep walking right, and then take a shot at your worm on the right side. And this is great because it ends up with two worms in a pile. So a double damage crate while it's on the left side of the map. And with the next worm in your rotation, just do a backflip, aim rope just a little bit up, attach rope to that book, extend to get the double damage, just airstrike these guys. Uh, it's pretty hard not to kill them both. Just for consistency's sake, I like to aim just at the top of the D in the right field soldier's name. You don't really have to do that, you can eyeball it. 
but I think I have missed this very, very occasionally when I'm just uh, eyeballing it, so uh, this is just nice for consistency. So you'll kill these two guys, and this is about as fast as you're going to do this one. Now, here's the other nice thing the CPU can do, and it commonly does this if it gets red wind. So he walks right, takes a pot shot at your worm 5 with bazooka, and on retreat walks right a little bit more. This is actually even better than the previous outcome because he took a shorter turn and we can still kill those two guys with airstrike. We just have to aim it pretty precisely. So same thing, want to rope over here, get the damage times two crate. This time you want to aim to a perfectly precise spot. So I would say first get your cursor to this position. Notice that the rightmost pixels in the cursor for the airstrike are aligned with the rightmost pixels of that upper right corner of the book, but not the black outline of the book, the colored part of the book. And then I just go down one pixel from there. And this is also another good time to have your ease of access settings mouse keys enabled just in uh, Windows settings. That lets you use the numpad to move the cursor left, right, up, or down one pixel at a time, which is really nice. Um, additionally, you can also get a mouse that has DPI settings that let you control the speed of the mouse. That's also great for precision control. So if you get it to this spot, just launch it. Should kill these two every time. Now on to the ugly outcomes. So this worm can walk right, fire a bazooka, hit himself a little bit. This is really annoying because he's just not quite far enough for us to get that double kill. So this really turns it into a four turner. And at this point, it's not even really worth us getting the damage times two crate. So ideally, just jump right, keep walking until you get to this worm. And you can kill him with just a mine if he's uh, about this far out. So I would just say get to the top of his head, keep nudging left. I would say maybe do like five nudges and that's good. And you can send him to the water. <clears throat> the next field soldier will always walk right. And you can use rope with your next worm. Rope over to him. Probably just fire punch him is uh, going to be the easiest way. So that's about the best you can do for this outcome. And as you can see by the time, the mission ends in the 3 minute range compared to before... It was maybe in the 2 minute 30 second range or so. And that's a pretty big time loss for a run that can be between like, you know, an hour and an hour, 30 minutes, something like that. So I would say if you get this outcome, it's considerable to reset. You don't have to. You can definitely keep the run going, but uh, it's worth thinking about. Just depends. The absolute fugliest outcome is this one. And luckily you don't get it too much. But when I get it, I tend to reset, because it can mean a 4 or 5 turner, which is just horrible. So, he takes a shot at you. He may hit himself a little bit and slide left, or he may just stay up there on the book. So, in this case, you can try to make it a 4 turner by using a cluster trick. So, get over to the worm. Just nudge right a little bit. Once you face into him, lay a cluster... And try to get your worm to the same position as that worm is, just to potentially do extra grave damage. But it's possible this won't even kill. Um, so in this case, it didn't actually kill the worm. So this is looking like it's going to be a five-turner, which is just really not good. That's like a whole minute time loss. Um, so you have to spend another turn killing that right field soldier. And it would actually be a good idea on this turn to rope over to that field soldier and fire punch him to the right. Um, it's kind of up to you. You can go for that left guy or the right guy. Either one is fine. It might make more sense to go for the right one first. But either way, this outcome is uh, going to turn into a bit of a slog. Like well over three minutes. You know, three minutes, 30 or longer. Oh uh, yeah, and then at that point you can use airstrike or anything to, to kill that right worm. 
So those are the four outcomes you can get for this mission. And you may want to reset depending on which one you get. This is sort of a run killer, at least it is for me. Um, certainly when going for PB times, I will just reset if I get anything except the first two outcomes. Uh, especially because this is early in the run. And so it makes more sense to reset early if you know a big mistake has been made. Um, maybe we'll be able to control the RNG in this at some point, but at the moment, it's uh, a bit up in the air. And Ruffled Bricks has a great variation on this mission, which can also get you a 3 or 4 turner. It's detailed in the Worms Armageddon All Missions Speedrun Notes, which is a huge document that Ruffled Bricks has compiled, going into painstaking detail on just how to do all the missions. I have a link in the description, you should definitely check it out.